All right, in this video we're going to learn how to solve a quadratic using square roots, doing it all algebraically. Let's get started. Okay, first off, you've got two examples here, um, one on the left and one on the right. One on the left says 2x squared minus 50 equals 0. Uh, one on the right, 2r squared minus 32 equals 0. Our goal is to get the variable isolated, so what we want is x equals a value when we're all said and done. So what we need to do is use our inverse operations to get there. We want to remove each piece on the left side so that all we have left is the x on the left side. Isolate the variable. No different than a two-step equation. So step one, inverse operation of negative 50 is positive 50. That would cancel that out. Now if I do it to the left side, I got to add 50 to the right side, leaving me with 2x squared equals 50. I then need to get rid of the coefficient of 2, so I'm going to divide by 2 now, divide by 2, and I move all the way down to x squared equals 25. You're always going to save that exponent of 2, or whatever the exponent may be, you'll always save that to be the last and final step that you're going to um, inverse operate with. Now I need to remove the exponent of 2, so I need to do the opposite of squaring something. The opposite of squaring something is square rooting it. So if I were to square root, I've canceled out that exponent of 2. And if I square root over here, which I need to do it to both sides, I know that my final result is going to be square root of 25, which is a 5. Now you have to think about the fact that square root of 25 can be both positive 5 and negative 5. So you have to show both of the answers, positive and negative, and that can just be shown by a positive symbol and a negative symbol to the left of the value as I just showed there in red. Um, why is that? Let's go and just make sure we understand why I say both the positive and the negative. Square root of 25 is what number times itself equals 25? Well, there's really two answers. Five times five would make 25, and if I used a negative five times itself, another negative five, Negative and a negative would make a positive as well. So you can give the positive and the negative answer. So what we've really determined is our solution, which we all know from my, my previous video, is where the parabola is going to cross the x-axis. If you were to graph this quadratic out, it's going to cross at 5, 0, and negative 5, 0. These are the two solutions to this quadratic. Okay, let's go over and check the other one, make sure you guys understand this. Uh, same thing, we're going to remove everything on the left side so that all we have on the left side is R at the end. So we're going to get rid of that 32, opposite of negative 32 is adding 32. Now I have 32 on the right, which is equal to 2R squared. I want to get rid of this 2, opposite of multiplying, which is being done between the coefficient and the R squared, is dividing. So opposite of multiplying is dividing. Now I have r squared equals 16. Opposite of squaring something is square rooting it. That gets rid of that exponent of 2. Square root the right side. Square root of 16 is 4, but it can be both positive and negative. Remember we just talked about that on the previous problem. So you're going to give the positive and the negative result that you get. Now what this tells us, if we want to write it down as coordinates or ordered pairs, we have a 4, 0 point and a negative 4, 0 point for this parabola. Those are the two parts that the parabola would cross the x-axis. Remember that's where our zeros or in other words our solutions are found. Okay, so those are some fairly basic ones. Very, very similar to a two-step equation, the same way you'd work it out. The only difference is at the end here you have square rooting to be done to get rid of the exponent of 2. That's really the only difference. Okay, let's move on to another example, something that you need to know. This problem is different in the sense that when I go to isolate r, when I go to get r by itself, the first step is I'm going to add 36, cancels, add 36, and I get a negative 28 here on the right side. So I have r squared equals negative 28. This is not a possible solution. Right now you can stop and you can say the answer to this is no solution. All right. 
How do you know that? You know that because the problem you have here is this will not cross the x-axis anywhere. Nowhere on the graph is it going to cross the x-axis at. What this would end up looking like, just a rough sketch of it, is we'd have a parabola that's rising that starts above the x-axis. It's never going to cross anywhere on this horizontal line. How do I know that? Because right here I have r squared equals negative 28. R squared equals negative 28. So that's saying R times R equals negative 28. Think about that. Some number times itself equals negative 28. There's no way to multiply something by itself and get a negative value. It just can't be done. If you had a positive here times another positive, your result is positive. But if you have a negative times itself, which would have to be another negative, your answer is also positive. There's no way to get a negative result here by multiplying two terms that are exactly the same. Okay, because of that, you get no solution for this problem. You can stop right here. Whenever you have a variable that's squared all by itself, isolated on one side, and it says it's supposed to equal a negative result, it can't be done. It's no solution. All right, so there's examples like that. You'll see that in your book. 4x squared equals 25. This is the last and final step I'm going to go over here. Um, we want to, oops, let me erase that. That did not go through like I wanted it to. Um, here we have 4x squared equals 25. I just want to get rid of this 4 right away. I wanted to show an example like this so that you guys understand. Even when you get a decimal, it doesn't mean anything's wrong. Follow through as you would any other. So I get x squared equals 6.25. Sometimes students will be like, I got a decimal. Something must be wrong. Nothing wrong here. You're doing everything right so far. Last and final step, just like the other, square root to get rid of that exponent of 2. Square root. Now, me personally, I look at that as a 625. But you could also just type it in your calculator. Um, square root of 625 equals 25. But the square root of 6.25, we just need to add that decimal in there. That's going to be two and a half all right so that's just me learning or treating it uh, differently so I don't have to use a calculator but most of you are just going to type that right into the calculator calculator is going to give you this result but it is important that you remember it is both a positive and a negative two and a half because 2.5 times 2.5 will equal 6.25 and so will negative two and a half times negative two and a half so either one of those are answers okay these are your solutions there's two of them hopefully this makes sense i want you to study hard practice these problems you're going to do great on your upcoming test